first time we we played a show together was Roger Crager down in Texas. And, yeah, yeah. And, and it shocked me. He played uh, in Djibouti. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like in shock. I was like, <laughs> so many of those lyrics are just like, just, I won't say tongue in cheek. They're really yeah, good. Yeah, They're like. Yeah. <laughs> I did that show. Uh, they used to have I think this. he's got to sing that tonight, don't uh, y'all? Probably. At some point, you right. need to do it. It's, I don't think Billy's heard it. I haven't heard it. He hasn't heard, heard, heard it. Heard it? it. A, well, I got to do it right now. <laughs> no. He needs it. He I started needs it. writing tongue in cheek over yeah. here already in my head. <laughs> I'm very proud of this song. Uh, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> this, this song And your is, wife and your mom is, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My grandma would have loved this song. I used to call grandma and go, Grandma, what you doing? And she'd say, everybody I can and them that are easy twice. <laughs> it's the truth. Had a girl. Yeah. Well, I was going to do this other military song, but I'll go with this military song. I'm just saying. I'm pre this song has never won any awards or anything, but... It has in my house. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... One time they had this uh, funny song contest thing in Nashville. They, they, would, they would do this funny song contest. Do you remember those? No. They would do those? Uh, I forget who put it on, but I beat Win Varble Ain't Going Down on Brokeback Mountain. I beat Ain't Going Down on Brokeback Mountain with Djibouti. Yes. <laughs> We're all just I 13. Voted. I would have voted for We're all just 13 you. in our heads, aren't we? <laughs> So I've been, I'm proud to say I've been on 10 tours for Armed Forces Entertainment going overseas and playing for our men and women uniform. And on one of those trips back in 07, we went to the Middle East. And while we were there, they sent us on a little side mission to a country in Africa that's called Djibouti. Well, all the guys in the band who are 13 years old at heart was like, Djibouti, <laughs> we gotta write a funny song about Djibouti. That'd be hilarious. So uh, we procrastinated, and it was the day of the show, and we had not written the song yet. And I was like, man, I, I feel like we're letting down the troops, and they don't even know we're letting them down. We could, we're all great songwriters. We could have written a funny song. So we're like, well, we got like an hour and a half. Let's just throw something together and see what we come up with. So we wrote this song on a, uh, on a bunk bed in a tent in Africa <laughs> right before the show, and we thought, We'll never play this song again. This would be like one of those funny songs you write for somebody's birthday or something, and we'll just promptly forget it after we come back home. We played played it at one show in Nashville, and man, all of a sudden, it, people went crazy. I got a call one day from Brad Paisley's producer. He's like, hey, man, I heard this song of yours, and I really like it. I'm like, whoo, it's going to be a good year next year. I'm like, really? Which, which, which song? He's like, <laughs> Djibouti. I'm like, Brad Paisley ain't cutting Djibouti. <laughs> he should have. He should have. He just didn't. She said, I really don't think I'd like all that much in Djibouti. I said, no, no, I heard that it was pretty good in Djibouti. She said, but all my girlfriends said they hated it in Djibouti. I said, no, no, babe. The guy that cuts my hair said he loves it in Djibouti. Oh! <laughs> he just got back from Fantasy Fest. <laughs> you don't ever need no raincoat in Djibouti. Ain't got to worry about no kids. Uh-uh. Not in Djibouti. She said, but I heard that it was hot and dirty and nasty in Djibouti. I said, well, how bad could it be? You know everybody does it in Djibouti. You got the airmen in Djibouti. You got them soldiers in Djibouti. You got them jarheads in Djibouti. You got the sea man. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. talk about the Navy. Yeah. Y'all know Key West is a Navy town. Cousin Phil. It is. I was walking down the street the other night after the show before Coley got here. I was walking down the street after the gig and this guy goes, hey sailor. And I was like, I ain't even in the Navy. <laughs> 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 
They can have a whip and a, some leather underwear on. <laughs> right. Now down at the cantina, one hot and steamy night, I whined and I begged and I pleaded. See, I was trying to change her mind. So I gave her my beer card, and she slammed three tall boys down. We found ourselves a bunker, and I finally got her turned around. Well, <laughs> now she says she loves it. Here's your booty, she wants it all the time. Hit your booty and one tour of duty That just ain't enough Hit your booty She wants me to re-up Hit your booty She likes airmen Hit your booty She likes them soldiers Hit your booty She likes them jarheads Hit your booty She likes a sea man y'all know that uh, Coley and I relocated to North Idaho two years ago to be where my son Wyatt lives. My son Wyatt is a senior in high school this year and he lives with my ex-wife and it's been great. I get to see him now a couple times a week. It's, it's awesome. We go skiing together. We love it. But I've been going up to Sandpoint since I started uh, way back when I started dating my first wife and uh, that was in the early 90s, and, and the first time I went through uh, to get up to Sandpoint, I had to drive through this little town. It was called Athol, Idaho. It's spelled A-T-H-O-L. And I thought, what an unfortunate name for a town. Who would want to be from a place called Athol? Especially if you have a lisp. <laughs> well, as fate would have it, I was doing a show in North Idaho one night. And who should I meet but the mayor of Athol? Seriously, this little blonde lady named Darla, about five foot tall. And uh, she said, hey, I like your Djibouti song. I said, thank you. She said, you know, I'm the mayor of Athol. I'm like, oh, really? She goes, yeah. She said, you know what they call, call us up there? They call us Athols. <laughs> she said, and I know we're the butt of a lot of jokes. Later on, she said, you know, we can't, we can't even have a sports team there. You know why? I said, why is that? She said, because nobody wants to root for the Athol Raiders or the Athol Pirates. <laughs> and certainly not the Athol Packers. <laughs> but a few years back, Darla invited Coley and I to come up there and headline a little festival they have. It's called Athol Days. And we really did it for one reason and one reason only. We were hoping in the local paper up there, the Athol Bottom Dollar, that there would be a headline that read, Djibouti songwriter packs him in an Athol. <laughs> well, we didn't make the headline in the paper, but we did get invited back for Athol Days number two. She likes a canine in Djibouti. She likes them privates in Djibouti. She likes her grunts mm, in Djibouti. She got colonels in Djibouti. Oh, some pretty high ranking colonels. We were playing a show one night and this guy said, man, I can't, I can't believe you left out the most obvious one. I said, what do you mean? He said, you forgot to mention rear admirals in Djibouti. And another guy we know said, I knew a guy one time, his name was Rear Admiral Colin Hunter. He was destined to be a Rear Admiral. We were playing in Missouri. Uh, we were on our way to a gig in Sullivan, Missouri. And we're going down the highway and we looked up and we saw this big billboard for this place called the Uranus Fudge Factory. Y'all know that place? If you've ever been out to Mark and Colleen's place out there in Sullivan, you've probably seen the sign. Right across the bottom of the sign, it says, the best fudge is packed in Uranus. And I looked at Coley and I said, I don't know about the fudge, but we are definitely gonna stop and get the t-shirt. 
we're in the motorhome, you know, and you can't stop those things on a dime, right, Donnie Brewer? Because they're heavy, so we missed the exit. We had to go down the next town over and turn around, which is a little town called Dixon, Missouri. So we went down there, we had to swing a Yui at that uh, Dixon Uranus exit. <laughs> So we're walking around the store, we're looking at the t-shirts, waiting for our fudge to get packed. And uh, we kept noticing as the people would walk out of the store uh, with their purchases, all the employees would stop at the same time and they would say, thanks for picking your anus. In your booty, and it's dirty. In your booty, it's pretty nasty. In your booty, but I like it. In your booty, oh. Uh, well, I mean, not me personally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I always say it's better to give than to receive, especially when it comes to your booty. But the best thing about it all, the best thing about it all, is well, I'm really big down there in your booty. <laughs> Since Paul has been giving you the bonus third verse that wasn't in the songs, I'll, I'll give you the little bonus Djibouti story. One more little story here. The, so we got to know the people that run the bar where they do asshole days. A guy named John and his wife Stacy. And I told them about that place, the Uranus Fudge Factory. I said, if you guys do not open up the asshole fudge factory, I mean, then Coley and I are going to, because that's a million dollar idea. That's leaving money on the table. So Stacy took it upon herself to go on Facebook, and I, I sent her this link. The Uranus Fudge Factory had created this hilarious TV commercial. So I sent that to her. I go, see? See what I'm telling you? It's a money maker right here. So Stacy contacted them, and she said, you know what? At this year's Athol Days, we are, by God, going to sell Uranus Fudge Factory fudge at Athole Days. Oh, man. She was so excited. She ordered a whole bunch of fudge. You know how much fudge Stacy got for Athole Days? A shit ton. In your booty. Oh. Oh. I feel like I've gotten to know the Trop Rock audience quite well after that yeah. song. I, see, see how they are? Yeah. I, now I, you I, know I, what to write. <laughs> <laughs> I got to know them quite well. <laughs> yes. We're very close. Wow, that's so good, man. We're very close. We're very tight, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Paul, oh, turn this thing around. <laughs> you, you mean we got to clean up the stage? Yeah. <laughs>